three of the most popular action cameras are sitting right here in front of me. And today we're gonna to see how the image quality of the Osmo Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12 compares with the all new Insta360 Ace Pro. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Insta360. In saying that, what you're about to see has come straight out of each of the cameras and hasn't been altered in any way for a nice, even comparison. Let's get into it. Handheld vlogging with all three, obviously it's super, super easy to see myself with the Ace Pro with the flip up screen at the back. And by the way, for those wondering, when the screen is folded down, it is as durable as the Ace Pro or the GoPro Hero 12 or any kind of action camera. But it is super handy being able to see myself nice and clearly. And also active HDR kicks in when you're shooting under 30 frames per second in 4K in video mode. So you might see that my face and everything is nicely exposed and we still got detail in the clouds and the highlights and everything behind me. The Active HDR actually works really, really well with the Ace Pro. Usually HDR video can look pretty mushy with some ghosting artifacts. But because of the processing power of the Ace Pro's 5 nanometer AI chip, it does it in a way that allows for a more crisp HDR video image. The Ace Pro can shoot up to 8K, but what's the point? 8K TVs here in Australia aren't so popular, plus it'll chew up a good amount of data. The beauty about having an 8K sensor means that they can do 4K pixel binning, which takes a grouping of four pixels and processes that combined data into one pixel. A pixel bin 4K out of an 8K sensor gives you better image quality and more dynamic range. What this also means is that when you use the Ace Pro's clarity zoom function, it goes out of 4K pixel binning mode to just standard 4K, which gives you a 2x zoom without losing any detail. Whereas if you crop in with other cameras, you lose a heap of resolution. Good news guys, the ND filters for the Ace Pro have arrived. You can have ND8, 16 and 32. For this example, I use ND8 across all the cameras, 4K, 50 frames, 1 one hundredth of a second. In this test as well, we're gonna be looking at the field of view of each camera, as well as the audio quality. So I have a Purple Panda lav mic that's just fixed inside of my helmet and I just plug that into each of the cameras so you can hear what it sounds like between each of the cameras. So the focal length of the Ace Pro is 16 millimeters. So generally speaking, the lower the millimeter, the wider the angle. And the Ace Pro is the highest out of them all at 16 millimeters. But you should still be getting the handlebars in, uh, nice and comfortable. It should look pretty natural. It's not too warped or anything. You're not getting any weird fisheye sort of effect around the edges. Shooting ultra wide, the Osmo Action 4 has a focal length equivalent to 11 millimeters, which is a lot wider than 16 millimeters. The GoPro Hero 12, when in super view, has a focal length of 12 millimeters, which is just one up from the Osmo Action 4. So it'll be pretty much the same. Um, should be nice and wide, you've got all the bars in and everything. Don't forget, if you don't have ND filters, you can apply Motion ND in the Insta360 app for an AI-generated motion blur effect. The quick release system, very handy. You don't realize how handy it is until you don't have it. Stick that in the bottom. Boom. That is not going anywhere. That is locked in there nice and tight. And then you just squeeze these guys and then away you go. The Ace Pro is able to capture some of the best night footage that I've ever seen out of an action camera. And this is due to a few factors. The sensor size is one 1.3 inch, which is among the largest in the industry and is the same size as the Osmo Action 4. The GoPro Hero 12s is smaller at one 1.9 inch. Remember how we spoke about 4K pixel binning? Well, the larger pixels are able to capture more light than the smaller pixels. The more light, the more you see. Also, the aperture plays a major role in how much light reaches the sensor. The aperture of the Ace Pro is f2.6, whereas the Hero 12 and the Osmo Action 4 is 2.8. Remembering that the lower the f-stop, the wider the aperture, which gives you more light. A special ability that allows the Ace Pro to crank its ISO without showing near any digital noise at all is the 5 nanometer AI chip. Among the many incredible things that this processor can do, it also denoises the footage captured by the sensor as it's been written to the SD card. And the results truly speak for themselves. There are lots of comments on my launch video about the lack of interchangeable lens on the Ace Pro, and yeah, it is a bummer. I mentioned this to Insta360, and so now they offer to replace the damaged lens guards free for all users. What I also like to do across all my action cameras if I'm not using an ND filter is to use the polarizing filter that comes with your ND filter kit usually, and I use this to protect the lens from any sort of stone chips, even if they are replaceable. The L mount bracket has also arrived for the Ace Pro. That just mounts up like that. And now you have the option to either stick your mount vertically or 
So which do you prefer? Ultimately the choice is yours, but if you do decide to choose the Ace Pro, please consider using my affiliate link in the description below where I receive a small kickback at no extra cost to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next vid. See ya. So Corey let me borrow his Scrambler 1100 uh, because I was by myself and I needed to rock all the cameras and having a chest mount with the T7 means that you would have just stared straight at the tower. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for the loan, bro. She's a bloody ripper. <laughs>